Hello guys, happy Saturday. So today is Sharing Saturdays and I've brought my dad on to my stories because he is a trained psychotherapist and has taught me a lot about anxiety and things like that over the last probably year, two years. Two years, I've graduated two years ago, I always forget. I feel like I'm a little bit younger than I am. But yeah, my dad's helped me massively and we wrote a blog post together about a year ago actually to this like day and that massively and a lot of you guys really felt like it resonated with a lot of you and after sharing the post I realized it was a really nice way of kind of connecting with all you guys who were dealing with similar feelings towards anxiety and stresses at home and I just felt like it made me feel less alone so I wanted to come on my stories and continue to talk about it, especially with everything going on at the moment with the help of my dad, because I feel like it can really positively help all of us know that we are all in this together. And just in case there's any of you guys struggling, some of the strategies that I found really helpful. So I'm gonna ask, my dad I find it really difficult talking to the camera, so I'm gonna ask him directly and then you can like speak to me. Firstly, what would you say to someone if they came to you and they were really, really struggling with anxiety at home and didn't know anything about it at all and didn't really know any way of dealing with what they were going through how would you like explain anxiety to someone well the first thing i often say to people is we start to break down this idea of what anxiety actually means mm -hmm. so anxiety often means uh, worry overthinking for some people uh, anxiety means for some other people that they feel like they have no control over their body sensations or their behaviors um, and some people consider anxiety as an emotional state. The thing is, is it's actually all three, um, and probably many more. So there are sensations, there are images that you create in your mind, there are behaviours that often you engage in that mm -hmm. uh, may be uh, overly fixated on something, overly obsessing about something, of course worrying and making meaning, too much meaning out of things, mm -hmm. um, and then over-ruminating on that, that can be considered anxiety. Yeah. Also, so there are many different states and experiences as a result of uh, this word anxiety, which is used as a bit of an umbrella catch-all. So yeah. it's worth breaking it down and finding out uniquely what your biases are. Which ones do you lean into the most? Is it yeah, overthinking? So yeah, so for example, for everyone, anxiety is completely different and working out where yours stems from, whether it's overthinking a situation that you might be going into or whether it's... I don't know what the other example I'm trying to think. Like, well, there might be um, certain behaviours that you engage in repetitively. So people often mm. talk about um, they might feel uh, they might be obsessive behaviours, and uh, which might be a way of distracting you from the feelings that you're actually having. So maybe picking up your phone a lot of the time, maybe reaching for a cigarette a lot of the time, yeah. maybe over exercising. So often that can be a symptom of. Uh, anxiety, trying to manage anxiety by over-engaging in something else. So, yeah, overstimulating your body in different ways that then could cause it to block out what's actually going on for the person. Well, a lot of uh, things around anxiety is that they're actually symptoms of maybe an underlying cause. Mm -hmm. So is it that uh, there's actual fear that you're experiencing, um, which is probably useful for you to identify or for any of us to identify. Mm -hmm. And then there are the symptoms that manifest as a result of that, like I've just described, like uh, overthinking or behaving in certain ways. Yeah, uh, or not having control or having too much control and it. things like that. So I guess um, mm. I know for me personally at the moment, not having any control over what's going on because we don't really know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I think that's where mine comes from a lot of the time because I don't have that control and it's very uncertain. So if I'm feeling overwhelmed, I think it's my thoughts that then control a lot of that. So that's, I think, my personal experience with it is understanding that it is just, it really is in my head. So finding different strategies or ways that then I can get out of my thinking state and getting more in tune with how my body is doing. So obviously sometimes I think, I don't know if this is right in saying, but when you're feeling like that, you can feel quite, sometimes it can make you feel quite sick, that anxious feeling. I don't know, not with everyone, but sometimes for the individual, it can feel, you can feel quite sick. And I think that feeling then stops you from like, feel like eating or having a drink or anything like that and getting up because you feel like you want to just kind of go in to yourself. Yeah, some of the basics of actually thinking about anxiety is, is what can be most useful for people is uh, understanding what happens to the brain and the body. Yeah. 
and uh, it brings a little bit more objectivity. So rather than I'm in this interior world that I'm trying to navigate, uh, what's happening for me is if you take a moment to think about what is actually taking place. So the brain doesn't necessarily know the difference between fact and fiction. So if you start mm -hmm. imagining a video playing in your mind, it's going, you're going over and over and over again, yeah. something bad's going to happen. There's a, a lion outside that might come in any minute. Is that fiction in my head or is there fact? Is there really a lion that's outside? But if you tell your brain enough in the images yeah, that there is then what happens is cortisol is released from your brain, you, you get delivered more adrenal, which the adrenals sit on top of your kidneys. Mm -hmm. um, the body then starts to produce more ad adrenaline, the blood flows faster through your heart into your muscles, the body starts to feel agitated. This is often the panic that people feel. They feel mm. that they want to go to the toilet. They yeah. feel like they want to be sick. Animals are often sick or defecate, so they wee themselves or they crap themselves um, yeah. because if you get rid of what's in the gut then you can move faster so this is then when these two things yeah like flight or fight like you fly or fight so yeah. you might have a tendency in threatening situations when you feel all that adrenaline come online to run away from the lion or you might want to fight the lion and the idea of fighting the lion or running away from the lion is to feel as safe as possible. So often mm -hmm. what people are calling anxiety is an adrenal response that the body is actually engaged in. Yeah. And, and one of the ways to kind of manage that is to actually mobilise the body a little bit, not to necessarily fight a situation, but to shake off some of the adrenaline. Mm -hmm. That's one of the yeah. things you can do to manage some of the symptoms if you've triggered an adrenal response so yeah like standing up doing some star jumps or doing a walk mm -hmm. or getting outside quickly and walking up and down and that kind of movement can sometimes help your body release that adrenaline build up that you have when you are feeling like you are feeling anxious or you do feel like a panic attack's coming on or anything like that it's that movement aspect of getting your body moving to get that adrenal response released so that there's not a build-up of it in the body. Well, you're and following what your body is actually asking you to do. Your body is yeah. saying, I need to move. Yeah. Um, so if you allow your body to move, then you basically responded to what the system is actually doing, which is mm -hmm. blood flow to the muscles. Another thing that people don't realise is that what happens when the blood flows to the muscles the back part of the brain starts to engage. And when we're used to thinking in very clear ways, our executive function at the front of our frontal lobes, that starts to shut down because, mm. and this is why and they've noticed in research that the IQ plummets. So I often say to people, oh, okay, so we all actually get dumber. We all turn into morons when we have too much stress and we can't think straight. You yeah, know, so it's like you feel like a fish, out. like you literally can't remember, can't remember what anything. I did for lunch yeah, <laughs> when I'm stressed. That's it, the, yeah. the frontal lobes aren't actually yeah. working. So you won't be able to think straight until the adrenaline is subsided. So mm -hmm. if you move through some of the adrenaline, yeah. then the neocortex comes back online and starts to actually go, oh, I can think straight again. So don't try and think th through something when you're yeah. highly adrenalized. Yeah. And the, and the term that you use, panic attack, yeah. I often encourage people not to use that term yeah. because um, um, who is actually attacking you? It might feel yeah. like it, but is there anybody actually attacking you in that moment? Yeah. Or is it just you thinking you're going to be attacked? I think that, for me, is hard to sometimes exp like, I explain it to people around me that, and I've said about it before with you guys on my stories, but like calling panic attacks moments in went to people that know me mm. if I need to explain them because sometimes even the word attack can make you feel like you're being attacked or have those kind of, without realising underlining um I guess feelings to that word like it in some way for some well, people words have a lot of power and meaning and they can be spell like and so yeah. if you're telling yourself like i said there's the line outside yeah your brain doesn't know the difference between fiction so if you're saying yeah, to yourself you're i'm being attacked i'm being attacked i'm being attacked you're basically telling your body to release more adrenaline and so actually because your body's ready to yeah get this, this out is, the way kind of thing and this is why thinking in positive terms can often be useful mm -hmm. because then you can think then you're telling the brain and the body that actually I'm safe yeah one of the best ways to um, talk through self-talk positive self-talk is mm -hmm. to say I, I'm safe so if you cannot find a safe environment find one internally for yourself so mm -hmm. it's just the nervous system um, functioning between you know having too much adrenaline or resting and not having enough we need adrenaline yeah. but when we've got too much it's like turning the
the gas knob up on the cooker, when it gets too high, it gets too hot. Yeah, and then everything spills out, and we don't want that. Right, right. Yeah. So think, thinking in terms of what is actually factually going on, yeah. and what is just a story that you might be telling yourself, or imagining something bad that's actually going to happen, Yeah. rather than just seeing it as, well, something's happening. Yeah. Rather than it's a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah. And I think, for me, my understanding of when learning a little bit more about what my body was going through was really, really helpful because it kind of allowed me to then understand what the patterns were when I was experiencing anxiety and how it was for me because I think it is a, like individual to everyone. Everyone experiences it in different ways. Obviously, there is that adrenal response and the bodies do work with the fear of flight and flight and things like that. But for me... But from my experience, I feel like everyone does deal or express it in a lot of different ways. So I feel like the coping, learning your ways of coping with it or different strategies of learning how to deal with when you are feeling anxious are different for everyone to find what works for them. Yeah, everybody has their own unique way. So for, for, for me, for instance, if I started feeling an, an adrenal response um, rise in, in my body then I will tune into my breathing mm -hmm. and rather than to try and move away from the adrenaline that's there it's so, oh there's some adrenaline um, but can I sit with that and usually mm -hmm. sitting and breathing is, is enough for that to subside if it then starts to build like I said the gas mark going up then maybe I need to move yeah and usually either checking in with my breathing um, or sitting still is enough but if it, the adrenaline is too high then I'll move and yeah. I'll shake some of that off. Um, this is why yeah. meditation can be very, very useful or contemplative practices for people yeah. because what it does is is help regulate the nervous system. So the nervous mm -hmm. system has two parts. Yeah. One which is where the adrenaline works, which is called the sympathetic, mm -hmm. and then you have the parasympathetic, which is the part which is for rest and recovery. Mm -hmm. And rather than them being like spikes, too much anxiety, too low, too adrenalized, not enough adrenaline, exhausted, feeling depressed, too much anxiety, totally stressed, and, and so it's an up and down rather than it should be more of a wave, so it should self-regulate. Yeah. So there are lots of ways that you can help the nervous system become more like a wave. Yeah. One of the biggest things is um, to support that is the way that we eat. Mm -hmm. One of the things that if we eat sporadically and either then binge have too much, Mm -hmm. and then have none and then starve ourselves what happens is our blood sugar levels go up and down in a spike the same way mm -hmm. so if we eat regularly then our blood sugar levels stabilize if blood sugar levels plummet then cortisol is released again and the adrenal function goes up to and fill your body so you have the energy so you feel like you've got energy it's like but it's a false energy so then you go oh i'm anxious so what yeah. is it that i'm anxious well maybe the fact that you've not eaten for three or four hours and your yeah. blood sugar levels have dropped yeah. so is that psychological it can become psychological but mm -hmm. it's actually physiological it might be just down to how you're eating yeah so it could be loads of lots of obviously there's lots of things. different triggers that may trigger this idea of mm -hmm. what, what anxiety is most people use the word anxiety and think it's something psychological and sometimes it is but it can be physiological it is physiological process mm -hmm. as well and it's to what degree it is yeah so it being individual to everyone still to exactly, what they're yeah. going through it, it's unique to everybody in terms of what symptoms arise mm -hmm. what causes it and then how you manage that yeah so for people to kind of explore what it could be through what they're going through and sometimes it, I, I get a lot of people that have sometimes messaged me in the past and said that they don't think it's anything they don't know where it's come from yeah and so um, the, the, that might be like you've, you've, you've we just mentioned around uh, it could be to do with blood sugar levels it could do with hormonal imbalance it could be to do with a lack of sleep mm -hmm. um, it could be like in the situation that, that we find ourselves in now um, we're, we're all having to live a little bit day to day not knowing what yeah. is familiar and you mentioned control earlier mm -hmm. um, of course control really means that uh, we like structure we like familiarity and, and as human beings there are two really innate things that we um, rely upon and mm -hmm. one is the, the need for familiarity and habit so 
oh, I do the same thing each day, it's familiar, we will have a little rituals and yeah, structures, routine, yeah. routine, and they keep us feeling safe. Mm -hmm. And then if we have too much of that, we go, oh, well, I'm a bit bored or I'm a bit down. Actually, I need more novelty. Yeah. So I need something new, I need adventure, I need excitement. But if you have too much adventure, too much newness, and there's a lot of newness going on right now, it's like, what's going to happen next? Yeah. Um, then we can start to feel that we've got too much novelty, too mm -hmm. much of the unknown, and then we feel then overwhelmed and we then crave structure so it's like okay yeah. i need to get back in control if i get some structure yeah. then i'm going to feel safe again so the degree of structure and habit so and finding that like balance, finding of, balance again. of maybe creating small routines and yeah. things like that within day-to-day -day life That's and it. just Great. taking it i guess at the moment day to day by day because we don't really have the control to know what might be going on because that is out of our hands but just kind of adding in some structure can That's be fine. quite positive and help us kind of feel a little bit more like we know what's going on just with what we've got going on at the moment whether it's at home or within work at home uni stuff at home like that kind of thing as well um i know i felt like that when i was traveling quite a lot actually it's like when you're getting pushed out your comfort zone and you're in situations where you have no control over what's going on whether it's flights whether it's anything like the boat anything like that that you can't control it's there's no there's no way of kind of work it's kind of like getting into that state of mind where you can think clearly again because sometimes you can't think straight to actually all sort out what's going on around you so sometimes just giving yourself the time I think to get back to feeling calm yeah I mean this is where contemplative practice comes in meditation because what a mindfulness what it mm -hmm. encourages you to do is just to be with whatever is actually happening they yeah. talk about um, just be with what it is that is arising so pay attention to not just your breathing pay attention to the conversation that you're having with someone uh, pay attention if you if you're consumed by being inside your own mind too much then mm -hmm. just pay attention to the world around you look outside yeah. and uh, really bring your internal world out into the exterior and just pay attention to that and um just notice what's happening without passing judgment. It's a good thing. It's a bad thing. Could it get difficult? Oh no, I must make it more positive. It's like um, it's holding. It's finding a third position, which is uh, um, all that is actually happening or happening in this moment is as it is, rather than making it good or bad. Unless you're just feeling what you're feeling. Just be and where being. be where you are, and see if you can allow yourself mm -hmm. to just be with where you are. And yeah. Practicing that enables us to feel a little bit more settled yeah. rather than always looking for the good and trying to ignore the bad. It's like, that's life. It comes and goes, it ebbs and flows like, yeah. like waves. And uh, can we just be with what it is that is arising? And usually through most challenge. In, mm -hmm. in Chinese culture, I mean, if we're talking about that we might be in a bit of a collective crisis, um, the Chinese don't have a word for crisis as, and crisis isn't seen as a necessarily a bad thing it's more like yin and yang it's good and bad it's death and rebirth so when something ends mm. something of the known ends something new and there's a new normal that is will eventually become normalized and then become structured at the moment there's a lot of novelty mm -hmm. and it's like can we just trust that actually these changes may actually there might be opportunities for us all for yeah. a new way of actually being rather than it's a bad thing yes there's lots of suffering and there will probably be some more yeah and out of that will something new be born and rebirth out of the experience maybe yeah. so yeah i think yeah i think through lots of different situations no matter what it is in life there's a lot of learning that through feeling overwhelmed and the change in our bodies and then coping with that even in itself is growth i think can teach you quite a lot about yourself so yeah remember when you were little no. and <laughs> no. you don't i mean one, if you think about well one, i do a one, little bit once upon a time you couldn't crawl and then you yeah. you couldn't walk and there was a moment between when you would have been crawling and you didn't know what walking was actually like. It was the unknown. Yeah, just try it out. But Throw you yourself get, in. You get up, you'd stand down, you'd get frustrated, you'd get sad, you'd get scared that everybody else was doing it, but you couldn't do it. And then eventually you stood up. And yeah. now you can stand and you can crawl. 
if you want yeah, to. It's like learning different so strat- like different techniques. It's like when I was yeah. saying to you the other day about not being. I honestly didn't know how to use the London Underground until this year. I can finally do it without even looking at my phone, and that is an achievement for me because I was so scared of going into London by myself. But yeah, I was like, that's an achievement. I'm going to be proud of it. Um, yes, I think it is. Yeah, it's finding. I guess overall, I think learning about like my dad said about some of the feelings about anxiety and where it stems from that for me as a basis was really really important in learning where my anxiety might be coming from or how it works in our bodies as well and then going through different strategies with you and mum that really helped basically I did like trials on what strategies I found worked for me when I was feeling anxious and kind of now found my top like two or three that I find really work for me when I'm feeling like that so I've shared with a lot of you guys before and over my blog post the 10 different strategies that we came up with together um that are obviously recommended as well online and there's lots of different um apps that I shared yesterday like meditation apps that are part of that which are really really supportive and great with like helping your mindset and kind of getting into more of a positive mindset or mindful mindset and I think a lot of the strategies like we were saying it's individual anxiety to the person finding different trying different strategies or techniques that you feel then may support you when you are feeling in that place and for me for example getting out and going for a walk or a run just me doing that for myself and usually by myself is usually when I feel like that helps me best and giving myself that time to just be kind of try and change my mindset like yesterday I wasn't in a great mindset and I really and I just pushed myself to go out even though I really didn't want to go for a walk and afterwards I felt so much better just being by myself and being in that place and there's lots of different things in different environments like when I've traveled in the past struggling on the trains and aeroplanes and there's lots of little like hand um, cream exercises that I do when I'm flying where I will sit and just focus on using hand cream in my hands so it's like physical touch so that I can be focusing on like the touching of something or the seeing of something so whether I'm looking at writing on the underground and I'm looking at all the different tube maps and reading all of them and I'm just trying to focus on that or trying to focus on what I can smell and see so there's lots of different I guess strategies which I mean we've spoken for quite a while so I'll probably leave in the next few slides for you guys to read but I know that they were strategies we came up with together. Um, One one of the first things I think for people to consider maybe is there's there's an acronym that uh, is often used rather than just using the term anxiety Mm -hmm. is if you can find out where that anxiety is coming from like I said right at the beginning is it overthinking Mm -hmm which is over imagining stuff and making meaning out of something yeah. too much meaning out of something is it coming from your body is it coming from your behavior or is it an emotional state so just breaking that down and there's an acronym which says uh, which is cybam which is s i b a m so next time mm-hmm. you feel anxious and um, maybe just hold some space around that term anxiety and possibly consider okay so what's happening in my body so what are the sensations oh I can feel a tingling Um, I can feel my breath getting faster oh I feel a bit sick in my stomach so just pay attention to that sensation images oh I'm imagining that the bad thing is going to happen okay pay attention to that Mm -hmm. behavior oh I notice I'm pacing up and down I notice that I'm uh, talking very very fast oh yeah I notice that I'm noticing my behavior Um, and affect which is an American term really for emotion so what's the emotional state oh I feel scared I feel apprehensive Um, okay notice my emotional state and then the meaning so the meaning that I'm applying to my experience okay I'm anxious therefore there must be something wrong Mm. well and maybe, maybe if I look around maybe there isn't actually anything wrong in this moment but it's the meaning that I'm making and the story that I'm telling myself. So sensation, image, behavior, affect, or emotion, and meaning, cyber. Mm -hmm. And if you break that down, anxiety becomes more than just one thing. There are five things where anxiety Mm -hmm. can manifest. And if you just track that, like you were tracking something 
um, for, new for the first time and just be curious and get to know what your version of anxiety is because maybe it's you're more adrenalized more of the time maybe you're an overthinker maybe you just emotionally feel a bit distressed maybe you make lots of meaning out of mm. uh, things that maybe aren't necessarily true so what's your bias so if you're spending a lot of time like i said earlier on the inside of meaning making maybe come outside and be in your body if you're spending a lot of time being obsessive in your behaviour, maybe do some contemplative practice yeah. and reflect. So you do the op- not quite the opposite. Yeah, like we've spoken about the obsessive, like being in control and that kind of yeah. behaviour with me before, because that's something that if I'm not in control, I get very, very like highly stressed and overwhelmed. And then you said to me, why don't you add into your routine something that you didn't know that was planned for the day or Mm. that you on purpose Mm. do something that wasn't controlled or wasn't planned or wasn't in organized to do that day so whether it be that I started to be a bit more spontaneous with picking up the phone for friends or um which sounds very very simple but for me it's not it's not like that in my head um so or just changing or being very like yeah I'm gonna go out for dinner tonight because I'm gonna be spontaneous for once and just little starting with a bit smaller things than that actually I think it was more like starting with putting my phone down and going and doing some movement or you're breaking doing that, yeah so like breaking the pattern hmm. that I was doing which was being in control of every little thing in my life which meant i and wasn't that fun <laughs> like I didn't feel like I was being myself and I felt like and I was unhappy with how I was being so slowly adding that into my routine allowed me to feel a little bit like I was being a bit more spontaneous and making some conscious yeah. mistakes yeah making conscious mistakes that really yeah. positively helped me when with situations that now that I'm not in control of mm. in control of that I know even if my body does have that response to it that I can breathe through it or I can move through it and I can recognize that that is what's happening yet there aren't for me I realize there's not a lot of situations we can't be in control of everything and yeah and you can you can upskill and train your brain and your body and Mm. you can update your habits we can all do that Um, it's possible to change the way that we feel it's possible to change the way we behave and think Um, but we may have to challenge ourselves it's a bit like training Mm. a new muscle Um, and if the if, if you overtrain a muscle, it then becomes stuck and in pain. So if we mm-hmm. overtrain our thinking in, in some habit, habitual way, it, that'll get stuck too. So we have to loosen it up and we have to develop what is often termed as psychological flexibility or emotional flexibility and be yeah. flexible in our behaviours. And what's being asked of us a lot collectively is that how flexible can we be? Mm-hmm. So we need to develop, be, become resilient and strong but also flexible yeah. and being able to kind of roll with some of the punches. And uh, that doesn't mean avoiding how you're feeling. That means about paying attention and being interested rather yeah. than delete, I don't want to feel that feeling. It's like, oh, I need to get to know my feelings. It's like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. what is this thing I'm calling anxiety? Be curious about it. And, and that way you will understand it. And for people that might say that's very difficult for them to even get to a point where they feel like they can start questioning it or really facing it what would you obviously it's individual for everyone it's less about questioning it it's about paying attention and just be a little bit curious Mm -hmm. um and and for those people that are feeling overwhelmed by that the obvious thing is oh i need to come away from that so then what you've advice you've offered earlier is to then or then do something different yeah um is then to mix that up a little bit and come out of that interior space i'm not saying i'm not suggesting stay and just pay attention and no ruminate on something but just uh, just hold it lightly and kind of be curious about rather than i just want to get rid of this feeling it's like oh maybe there's something useful for me to learn about myself Mm -hmm. here yeah yes (laughs) we could talk yeah we could talk for ages i think we've spoken for half an hour but yeah I will leave in the next few slides um, com- like strategies and I guess smaller term techniques that we've both written together that if you are in a place where you are looking for some support when whether you're with people or whether you're by yourself there's different strategies that I'll leave in the next few slides and also my blog post that we wrote together has pretty much what we spoke about but in paragraphs if you prefer reading rather than listening and that kind of thing but yeah I feel like learning about it 
really really helped me and hopefully you guys might find interesting learning a little bit like my dad said but I just thought it could be quite helpful learning about anxiety through what my dad talks about as that really positively helped me and what I was going through and then of course if you're in a place where you do need the support then I highly recommend looking into find a good listener find yeah. <laughs> external, like, external find... internal <laughs> yeah find someone that you feel like you can talk to whether that's someone in your life or outside of your life um and it doesn't always have to be the first person that you see because i think a lot of people feel like sometimes if it doesn't work once it's not going to work again and i've tried a few different people and find the right one that works for you because everyone's different but yeah that's it <laughs> That's enough talking for today. I hope you guys have a lovely Saturday. Thanks for listening and thanks, Dad, for joining. See you later. See ya.